mentioned before, um, I'm about to go on another hiatus. Because of that, I want to leave my own version of what happened between me and Logan out there. Because, as always, this relationship is, it's like almost viral in its shareability and the way that people keep bringing it up even years after it's over. This, this thing will haunt me forever. No matter what I do, I'll never be able to get away from it. So, excuse me, the least I could do is just try to put my own, my own version out there and hope that at least one person that listens to this can think for themselves and see things the way that they were instead of what you're reading online. And, um, I, I just hope that they can understand and not judge me for it or continue on the fight against me once they hear the truth or whatever, whatever. I don't know how to explain it. I've tried to make this video so many times. I just, I, I just can't focus anymore. I feel like I'm going crazy. I, I, I'm having so much trouble focusing. Anyhow, um, the reason for this video is that once again, there are sites out there that are sharing my information and sending people to my YouTube to blast me and call me out for being a pedophile and people are out for blood. They're wanting me jailed and they're wanting me punished and exposed and all this stuff because they think I'm a pedophile. And I'm here to tell you most definitely I am not a pedophile. First of all, a pedophile is someone who has a sexual obsession or interest in prepubescent children. I do not and I never ever have. I married an 18 year old. He was not 16 when we got married. He was 18. And uh, if anything that would fall under the, I forgot what it's called, for teenagers, I'll, I'll put it right here. Um, but I don't even have that because that is also sexual. And there was, I wasn't interested in a sexual relationship with him. That's not why we got together. I'll give you guys a little bit of a backstory, just a, a small backstory, but enough to help anybody that doesn't know me maybe understand a little bit, a little bit more about why I did what I did. Now, I am 43 now. Um, this is my fifth marriage that I'm on now with Josh. I'm not happy about it. I, I mean, I'm happy with him. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but I'm not happy that I'm on number five. Um, if it was up to me, I would have gotten married once and stayed married. I was never one who wanted to get married more than once. I always believed you meet the person you're meant to be with for the rest of your life. And I always had overly romantic ideas about what love is or what love should be. And um, I just, I never thought that I would be divorced once, once much less, much less four times. Um, the first person I married was physically abusive. He was really, really, really jealous, and he used to beat me, and he beat Dorian, my son. And uh, finally, I mean, I, I was like 19 when we got married, and uh, this was back in the 90s, and it was really hard, really, really hard to break away and make a life of my own, but I finally did. I never wanted to get married again. I was like, that, no, I failed, that's it, <laughs> even though it wasn't my failing. I didn't know he was like that, of course, you know, when we got married. Um, second husband he cheated on me with anybody he could he physically i wouldn't say abused me because he was little he didn't really hurt me i mean we'd hit each other i'd hit him back anytime he hit me um but he did hit me he hit me kick me he'd knock me down i hit him back uh he loved strip clubs loved porn he left he left so many times left my household so many times um he more emotionally abused me more than anything else and he did a number on me so much that even though our marriage was from like 2002 to 2006, I believe, um, I still have nightmares about him sometimes. Uh, every, every couple of weeks I'd say I have a nightmare about him and that sucks because I don't think about him at all. At least not that I know of, you know, uh, subconsciously there are he's he's still there or just the things that he did maybe i'm just really scared that josh is going to do that you know he won't though he's not that kind of person but he screwed me up really bad uh husband number three at the time we're friends now um but when we were together that was really bad he was like husband number one 
except he didn't hit me. He hit me a couple of times, but not like husband number one did. And, um, he porn again, he, he pretty much trapped me. He took me away from any friend I could have had. I couldn't talk to anybody. I couldn't do anything. He put key loggers on the computer, key loggers and, um, the things that would take screenshots of everything you did every couple of seconds and he would spy on my every move that was a really hard relationship to be in and I was absolutely miserable with him and um we finally split up that was that was something I had to work and scheme and connive at in order to get away but I finally did and um then there was Logan and then after Logan now it's Josh and I will die before I get into another relationship. That's it. If I can't make this one work, there's no one out there for me. And I, I just, I can't do it anymore. I'm not going to try. Uh, when I was younger, um, my parents got divorced when I was probably about six and my real dad took me from my mom to hurt her because I was the youngest one after he was done with me. He didn't want me anymore. He contacted her or he contacted my stepdad and said that if they didn't take me, they would, my, my real dad would send me to a foster home because he didn't want me anymore. And, um, pretty much when I was younger, I was, I was a pawn, you know, as a revenge for my parents to fight against each other. Um, I'm gurgling. I'm sorry. If you hear it, I'm not burping. I'm gurgling. Um, I have BPD, borderline personality disorder amongst other things. And the BPD probably stems from just the fact that I was, I was alone all through my youth. I mean, I, I've never really had anybody. I was never the favorite child. I was never loved. I mean, my, my, my real dad told me that my mom was dead. I didn't know that she was even alive until the day that he, he, um, sat me down and told me that I was going to be sent away. And it was just like, I was a thing to be sent between one from one family to the next to a mother that I didn't even remember or even know was alive. You know, my whole life was just uprooted at like 11 years old and I didn't even know what was going on. All I know is that throughout my whole life, I've always felt like I wasn't good enough. Like I didn't have anybody in my whole life. And I was the one I was getting in trouble. I was the one I was getting hurt. I was always the one getting hit. I was always the one getting punished. I never had friends. I never had anybody I could count on my whole life. And it's not easy to go out and try to find new parents. You know, you can't just see a man and a woman and say, you're going to be my new mom and dad, you know, but you could look for love that way. You can, you can see someone and meet someone and be like, you seem perfect. You're talking to me. You seem sweet. Um, I want to get married. I want to live with you. I want to be with you, you know, whatever. And that's what I did most of my life. You know, always looking for love, 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 just somewhere I could fit in somewhere I could feel wanted or feel important or feel special or just like I mattered to anybody at all. And, um, yeah, it just, it's never worked out for me. Um, obviously when I met Logan, husband number three and I had just split up and, um, I had, uh, I had had another boyfriend. This was a guy that I met about four years prior. He and I were really good friends at the time. And he told me that he had always been in love with me. We, we had lost contact for a little while. And then he found me again. He said he had always been in love with me, always thought about me. And, you know, kind of just, we had both had bad marriages at the time. I later found out he just fed me a whole bunch of crap and he wasn't like that at all. But I, those are all on my channel somewhere. I don't even want to get into that <laughs> right now. But at the time, he made me feel really special because I'm like, oh my God, if there's somebody out there that has loved me for four years surely it's the real thing and they must really care about me and I always used to love online relationships because face to face I always had guys wanting to use me for sex and that's the way I personally bonded with people if I felt close to them or like we were going to be close and you know we'd have sex and then I'd feel like oh you know I have a part of them they have a part of me and you know this way we're we're really close and it's love and they're gonna hold me and think of how much they love me and guys don't think like that as you know most guys don't think like that and um I've had guys threaten to rape me if I didn't have sex with them or use me tell me that they love me and all that and then once they get what they want they're gone and I end up 
I would end up feeling worse than I ever did before. And when you meet someone online, you can't do that. I never had like cyber sex or anything, you know, I just, we would talk and get to know each other. And because I'm so weird, I guess, and so different in the way I think and present myself and just how I am, apparently I'm really different from a lot of people. And that's why I get hate, so much hate amongst other made up stuff or twisted and turned stuff. But um, online, you can get to know another person and if you mean enough to them, they'll stick around and you guys can arrange to meet and then you can finally meet face to face without all the physical stuff getting in the way. So I always thought that was a really good plan. And so I was quite happy to be in that relationship. Um, but then it turned out he was just like everybody else and he left me for my best friend at the time and she pursued him and he went for it and um left me and at that time i said i never want to get into a relationship ever again never 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 i couldn't do it and that if i did end up in a relationship it was going to be with a girl not a guy because i was sick and tired of guys and all their crap you know i wasn't going to deal with it anymore and uh i was single for about a month maybe two months at that time and for me, I'm really, really codependent and I've always just, I've been like literally on a nonstop search for love since I was old enough to know what a boyfriend is, I guess. And, uh, I've never been single longer than a week, I think at that point. And I know that sounds really bad and it probably is, but I mean, I'm not going to lie. That's how it's always been for me. I've always jumped relationship to relationship. And when I met Logan, I had been single for like the longest time I'd ever been single and it felt really good um I felt like I didn't need anybody I wasn't looking for anybody when I met him I damn sure wasn't looking um Dorian my son it, they were not friends they had met each other at a party once like a couple months before and then ran into each other again and Logan had looked Dorian up saw pictures of me and was like oh my god she's hot and then turns out I'm his mom and uh, I had no interest in talking to him. I had no interest in meeting him. I was like, you know, if he's a friend of yours or if he's someone you know, he's going to be too young for me. I don't care. I don't need to know. And I brushed it off. And he kept persisting and persisting and persisting. And I was hot. I was hot. And he thought I was sexy and this and that and beautiful or whatever. And um, I got curious. I looked at a picture of him. And see, I'm used to kids like Dorian. Dorian, when he was... Even when he was 13, he looked like he was eight. And all the kids that I had seen, they all they all looked really young. Like, they looked their age or younger. And uh, Logan looked older. He looked like he was at least 18 or 19. He had a deep voice. He was tall, taller than me. I'm only 5'2", so everybody's taller than me. But he came off as someone much older. Um, when I saw him, I thought he was cute. That's it. I was just like, wow, you know... He's alternative. He's pretty hot, whatever. But that's it. I mean, I didn't think anything of it. Um, more than that, I wasn't going to plan to get my claws into him and hook up with him or anything like that. There's another note that I wanted to make now also, and that is that even though I am the age that I am, I've always had an issue with, I guess, with ages. Um, I've never felt my age, and all the time I often forget how old I am. I know that sounds really stupid, but I don't feel my age and I quite often forget. Um, I've never really emotionally matured past, I, I, I guess, late teen, early 20s. And I'm kind of stagnated there. And uh, although I've been like this my whole life, um, when I used to babysit, I babysit kids and I talk with them, not like they were younger than me, but like they were my equals. And if I meet someone and we get along and we talk and talk and talk and talk, turns out they're much younger than me. And if I meet someone and we're struggling to have conversation, we just can't really find anything to talk about. It turns out they're my age or older. It just, I've got nothing in common with people my age. I'm way too immature. I don't try to be at all. Um, I've just never, I've never changed. I've never grown. I just, I've always been this way and I've always really gotten along with younger people. That's, that's just, 
That's just how it's always been. And so I tend to not think about ages and I tend to forget ages a lot. Josh is 10 years younger than me and we forget. A lot of times we feel like he's older than me. He thinks that too. Um, I don't seek out younger guys. As I've gotten older, um, I have started liking younger guys. Not as young as Logan, of course, but younger than me. Something to fit my mentality, you know. Someone I can talk to and get along with, which is what we all want, you know. Someone that we can talk to and get along with. And when I was younger, they were more the same age as me. And the older I got, the more people my age, I just can't relate to them. And they can't relate to me. We, we don't get along. And um, husband number one was older than me. Husband number two was older than me. Three was younger. Logan was younger. And Josh is 10 years younger. Dorian's dad was older. Um, uh, some of my ex-girlfriends were older. Um, I've had... Uh, hold on. Sorry about that. I was being called. <laughs> um, anyway, what was I saying? Um, so yeah, I've dated younger and older throughout my life and like I said they, they've only gotten really younger than me significantly as I've gotten older just because I'm continuing to get older but my 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 mentality is still staying the same and so I I forget a lot of the times I'm not as young as I feel and I know people say that's no excuse but it's not an excuse it's just the way it is it's, it's, it's just the way it is um Anyway, uh, Logan came over and I saw him and I thought he was hot. He thought I was hot. We didn't do anything. He, we were sitting in my room, me, him and Dorian. My room used to be like the living room. My room still is like the living room. I always have my room set up, um, in the living room because it's the biggest room in the house and we usually don't have company. So it's, it's cool to have everything set up there. And, uh, we were smoking cigarettes, listening to music, laughing, joking, just every, all of us were just hanging out like no big deal. And, um, at the end of that visit, uh, he asked me to be his Valentine and, uh, cause it was almost Valentine's day and, you know, he, he hugged me by and that hug felt really special at the time. And, um, <laughs> sorry, geez, I'm super popular right now. Uh, trying to make this as concise as possible because I recorded this before and it was over an hour long and I don't want a video that long out there for something so simple but it's just there's so much to it it's not just a simple matter of I met this guy and we dated uh the accusations are far bigger than that and there's a bigger story behind why I did what I did so I'm trying to get it all down without being interrupted uh anyway to rehash I grew up alone I've always wanted a family or somebody to love me. I never felt loved. I've never mattered to anybody. I tried to be alone. Met Logan. Okay. Had no intentions of getting with him and dating him or anything. After we met, he and I both separately asked Dorian, just in case, um, what would he think if we wanted to date? And, uh, cause we knew we liked each other then, you know? And, um, Doran said he didn't care. He just wanted me to be happy. And he thought Logan was a good guy at the time. And then Logan asked me to be his girlfriend. Now, see, at the time I thought he was 18. He looked at, well, at least 18 because he, he looked at least 18. Turns out he was 16. And I was like, oh no. I instantly got online and I looked up the age of consent in New Zealand to make sure I wasn't breaking any laws because I did not want to get into trouble. I was... I was a bit thrown back by his age, I'll admit, but I never thought it was going to even go far. I didn't have a sexual interest in him. I just thought he was cute and maybe we can kind of date and it wouldn't be like a big deal. You know, like it was just, I was taking it as it comes. I romanticized it very, very, very strongly early on, you know, maybe we're meant to be together. And since everything good, um, nothing good comes easy. Maybe the hurdle that we have to cross is the age gap and we can get over this and prove that we were meant to be in love or, you know, whatever, you know, I said, I said stupid stuff like that and, um, always trying to find the deeper meaning behind everything or whatever. And there is no age of consent for males in New Zealand. And it's kind of funny though, because, um, considering especially the death threats and everything that I got afterwards, because the thing that everybody does over there, mostly males, 
is they all screw around and date 14 year olds 14 15 there's a couple in the um in the alternative community over there that have actually been jailed for screwing underage girls that's like what everybody does there my relationship wasn't about sex and it wasn't about manipulation or anything i literally met this guy and he was super sweet he sat there and watched all my bpd videos he listened to everything i had to say and i did think wow you know he's pretty mature I, i'm not so happy about the age but you know maybe maybe that's the hurdle we overcome the hurdle and it'll be the best relationship i ever had maybe this is the one and that's what I went with and I mean at the beginning I felt so loved and so special he he was really nice to me and I felt like I mattered to somebody which is all I ever wanted and uh, shortly after that though um, cracks started to show and I couldn't tell anybody because I was already under fire for the relationship like he quit school I didn't want him to quit school but he quit school and he slept all day played games all night and I was on a really limited budget at the time and I had food stashed all over because I'm always scared of like being poor again and starving and I would take food and I would just hide it and he went and found all of it and he he pretty much ate all my food. He ate me out of house and home and I said, um, I don't have enough money to support you like that. You've got to go back to school so you're not here all the time just eating all my food or go to get a job or something but you can't, you can't just do this and Dorian's being told the same thing you know Dorian tried to drop out of school too and I said you need to do something and um I was still looking for work as well by the way I wasn't just sitting on my fat ass hoping that somebody would take care of me I, I I had looked for work almost the entire time I was there um and then it got slower and slower as time passed and I realized nobody would hire me and this was sight unseen so it wasn't like they looked at me and saw piercings and tattoos um they heard my voice or found out I was from America and that was the end of anything I even had a company call me for a phone interview and as soon as I heard my voice they tried to tell me that there were no positions available when literally right before they heard my voice they said they were calling me for an interview so why would they call me for an interview if there were no positions open you know it, that that's the racism I experienced when I was over there uh, sorry Logan decided to get a job and he got one job most of the jobs that he got he had one job at a time. He never worked two or more jobs. The job that he got, and most jobs after that, except for one, I got him. I fill out his CVs. I looked. I applied. I messaged back and forth to people. I did every single thing for him that you could do, aside from making phone calls, because, you know, I'm not a man. I, My voice is different. And showing up in person. I did everything else for him to help him get a job. So he got his jobs like that because of me. I helped in any way that I could. Uh, I was very, very careful about the mother-son thing because with the age gap, I knew if I was on him too much, like, sorry, to pick up after himself or something, I would feel like I was being his mom and I didn't want that. I didn't want a mother-son relationship. I wanted him to be, you know, the adult or semi-adult that he said he was or wanted to be. I tried to dump him the first week I was with him and consistently for a few weeks after that until he begged me not to I said that I know that he's young and usually when people are young they go through many different partners as they try to grow up and find themselves and I didn't want him to look back later on in life and resent me for stealing his youth away I wanted him to know that this is what he wanted and he said he did um two weeks after we got together he got on one knee and proposed to me and uh we had a commitment ceremony and then once he turned 18, after he turned 18, we had a, an official wedding. Um, there was no manipulation or grooming involved. Uh, I literally just wanted to be with somebody who I thought loved me. Um, it was not a sex-based relationship whatsoever. And in reality, I wasn't sexual enough for him. I mean, I have sex when I'm with the people that I'm with, obviously, you know, um, but how I dress in pictures is not how I am in real life. In pictures, to me, it's kind of artsy and it's a way for me to look kind of like the way I wish I looked. I wish I really was as confident as people try to tell me I look in my pictures and, you know, you stand a certain way or you edit or 
you know, you wear clothes that you couldn't wear in public and um, you hide your gross bits and bobs and stuff. And in pictures, when I look at them, the completed picture, I'm like, man, I wish I looked like that. And I wish I was like that, but I'm not. And I'm not like that in real life. Um, in real life, I definitely don't dress like that. Uh, I'm not, I don't dress like this either. We went to like a little Christmassy <laughs> shindig with the neighbors and I wanted to look nice, motherly or whatever. So I, I dressed a, a bit nicer. But, um, yeah, I just, I guess he must have seen my pictures and thought that I was going to be some kind of freak in bed and that's what he ultimately wanted. He had told me before that he wasn't into porn or anything like that, but oh boy, he was. And, um, we slept apart for over a year. I know this sounds like I'm jumping around and I probably am, but it'll all come together. Sorry. Um we slept apart for over a year because he had a really bad snoring problem and I'm a really light sleeper and he didn't just snore a little bit. He snored massively and I begged him, please go to the doctor and see if there's anything they can do. You know, anything you, you stop, you stop breathing in the middle of the night. I'm pretty sure you've got sleep apnea. I worry about you. I'd stand over him and watch and make sure he was okay. And then finally we split up, um, went to separate rooms and then, you know, he, he was fine, I guess. But, um, he wouldn't get his snoring checked. He wouldn't do anything about it. And I would be so lonely in my room knowing I've got a husband that I want to be with and I'm completely by myself. He had withdrawn from me, quit talking to me, just started kind of, mm, mm. I'd say, you know, you want to watch anything? Mm. How was work? Mm. And I'd have to tell him, can you open your mouth and speak to me? You know, you're not even talking to me. You don't want anything to do with me. Why are we even together? You know, you obviously don't want to be here. And he wouldn't want to leave. He would, he would want us to stay together. And it turns out the whole time he was in his room, he was looking at porn day and night, all day and all night. And um, one day I, I was looking for a site that I accidentally closed. So I went through my history and his phone was hooked up to my Google account. And I saw his porn search history and my heart just stopped my heart just sunk right down to my feet and now i know that for some people porn is completely okay in your relationship and i'm not one to say that that's not right because it's not my relationship if you watch it if you don't watch it if you don't mind it you know more power to you but in my relationship especially being a person that has never felt like they're good enough and that has been cheated on and always just made to feel like this little completely expendable in any relationship no matter what you try to do for the person you're with um it hurts and it's something that i don't want to put myself through and so i make it known straight off the bat porn is not allowed in my relationships ever and um i i just oh, and then being bpd as well i cannot sit here and picture the person that i love or the person that i'm with looking at somebody else naked and getting hard for them and looking at their body and wanting to have sex with them or thinking about how hot they are and you know how big their tits are or you know whatever and then just splooging to somebody else like if you want to do something do it with me but i'm not a freak in bed i'm not anything like that i don't even like to have sex with the lights on i don't take off all my clothes um i just i guess i'm i'm pretty boring <laughs> i'll admit it i'm pretty boring but like he didn't even come to me and try he didn't even do anything and i had actually i i tried doing everything i could for him like tmi but before he went to his room even if i didn't want to have sex i'd you know something just so that he had release and so that he would be taken care of and not want to in case the thought ever crossed his mind. I, I didn't seriously think that he would go to porn, but just in case I wanted to make sure he was satisfied in some way and it wasn't enough for him. I will actually include a snippet here of something I found last month um, on my computer. When I went further into my search history, I found more stuff he had been looking at and uh, I'll just add it right here. So I have found Logan's search history um, from when he was using my Google account. 
I wasn't aware of all of these at the time. Uh, you can see the date is from 2014. I'm sure there's others that he deleted. He told me that he had deleted some um, and others he just got lazy and forgot or wasn't aware that they showed up. So let's get started. That is all him. I had no idea he was into that. Come on. Oh, kitty cat. Come on. <laughs> the kitty cat's crawling all over me. You can see here how often he was on porn sites. All hours of the day and night when I was alone in my room. Now remember, this comes from a guy that says that he didn't like porn, that he tried it and he hated it, and he would never disrespect me by watching it. Why would he? When he had me, apparently I was good enough. And he also made fun of people. <laughs> he made fun of people that would um, watch porn and like and shit. <laughs> now I haven't opened these YouTube ones. I don't even know what he has been searching for, who these people are, or what other videos he was looking at. That's another thing he said he wasn't into was hentai. And if these are the ones that he forgot about, I can imagine which ones he deleted. So it turns out that Every single day, day in and day out, he was doing this stuff behind my back, looking at porn and just completely neglecting me as a person. Um, I know for a while I was really fat. I was, I was miserable. Uh, I was unhappy. I knew my relationship wasn't great, but I felt obligated. I was kind of trapped into posting and pretending that it was this great, wonderful thing and we had every right to be together because I was under such fire for it. I felt trapped like there was no way I could ever leave this if I ever left the relationship it would just prove that we we weren't meant to be together and it was a fail from the start and I would get judged even more harshly and it was just it was a really really horrible relationship a um, horrible situation to be in to where you knew it wasn't working but because so many eyes were on you you felt like you had to stay and you had to pretend everything was good and any time he wasn't being a good husband, I had to fake it and fake it and fake it and fake it for him. Uh, like my birthday, I wanted a picture with him and he would just sit there and grumble so much. Like he didn't want any pictures with me. He didn't, I mean, he, of his own free will, he probably made about two videos to back me up. But even that was like pulling teeth to ask him, you know, if you feel like it, can you please maybe step in and say something just of, with your own words? If you really want to be with me or not, or if I've trapped you, just please say something. You know, you're leaving me to defend this whole relationship by myself. Like, I'm the only one who wanted to be in it. I'm the only one that took fire for it just because I'm older and I should have known better or whatever. But 
he didn't want to help me with anything. He wanted to stay with me, but he had no problem letting me take all the blame and watching me suffer for something that we both did. And yeah, he was young, but he wasn't like five or anything, you know, he, he was old enough to walk away if he wanted to. And I gave him plenty of chances and he never wanted to leave. And he was just quite happy to see me suffer. Um, but, uh, what was I talking about? Ooh, sorry. I'm just gurgling so much. All right. So I knew for a while that I, I had gained a lot of weight because I was unhappy and I, I'm five foot two and I had gotten up to about 200 and almost 235 pounds. I was like a big ball of fat, you know, and, um, I was, I was miserable. I hated myself. I hated I hated everything. I, I felt trapped. I felt lonely. I felt attacked. I, I just felt every bad emotion you, you could feel, really. And um, uh, I got gastric sleeve surgery and I lost about 70 pounds. And I started to care about the world again, hope that my relationship would be better, started to care about myself and the way I looked and my makeup and my clothes and I would ask Logan, like, are you happy that I, you know, I've lost weight and I care? And he would tell me he didn't see any difference in the way that I looked. Like, he couldn't even compliment me or anything like that. And... When I first got the surgery, you know, you have to change your whole way of eating. You, you learn, it's like you learn to eat from the start again. First you eat nothing but liquids and then you go into mushed foods and everything. And you're supposed to stay away from fast food and all that. Now, changing your body is one thing. You also have to change your mindset, which isn't easy when you love fast food. When I was in New Zealand, I hated most of the food there. So I had developed a diet of nothing but McDonald's and Domino's and things. And so... I was still trying to break myself out of that mindset and I really needed support. It's like eating unhealthy it is like an addiction, like smoking or drinking and the different levels of addiction, but it's hard to break out of what you're used to. And especially that's all I'd really eaten for the past 10 years. So I just wanted fast food. So I was trying this new lifestyle. I'd gotten most of my stomach cut out and I really needed his support. And I asked him, if you're going to eat anything bad, please don't do it around me. Um, I need to stick with this diet and I need your help. It's like if you're trying to quit smoking, you don't want someone smoking around you. You know, you, you need to keep that away from them. That's how you support someone you're with. I said, I don't want to smell it or see it. Don't even tell me you've had it because I'm going to want it. And if I start eating bad, it's going to undo everything that I've done. I'm not, I, I'm not strong enough to resist ten temptation if I smell something yummy in front of me. I'm going to want it. And I know that about myself. And so the way around it is just to keep it away from me. I thought that was logical. And he wouldn't even do that for me. He'd come home with burgers and pizzas and stuff. And sure enough, I started getting back into that and ended up putting on 20 pounds. I mean, it's, it's not what I was, but I would have been at my goal weight and then some and stayed on a completely healthy eating cycle if I had just had his support. But I didn't. And he couldn't even do that for me little things, little things to be a good husband to me. And, um, after I caught him with the porn, we both knew our relationship was over and we tried to pretend to ourselves and to other people that it was still okay. And we were going to work out, but we both knew there was just no recovering from that because I felt betrayed in a way I'd never felt before. And I never thought he was capable of, especially considering how much I sacrificed just to be with him and everything I was going through just to be with him and it wasn't enough. Um, and he said, you know, find a boyfriend or find somebody if you want. And if you can go home, go home. And that's another thing, you know, I had told him many times, if this isn't working out, we need to split up. We need to split up. I don't know how we're going to do it. We're both going to be under fire. I thought we were both going to be under fire but in reality. It turns out it's just me, but, um, I didn't want him to stay if he was unhappy because I, I felt so lonely. I just, there's no other way around. I felt so lonely with him and, um, he didn't want to go. Then my mom got sick and she had a stroke and I wanted to come back home to be with her, but
but I didn't want to leave my husband, my marriage, you know? And so staying in New Zealand with him, hoping to get his green card or whatever, so we could come back as a family, I ended up being too late in the end. And she just got worse and worse and worse and worse. And then right when I did come back, uh, couple months after I got back she had another stroke and she died and I was never even able to see her again and um you know I I can't say it's completely Logan's fault for me not going when she first had her stroke but if he knew he was that unhappy with me and he knew how much it meant for me to get back to my mom and the reason I was staying and I he knew this the reason I was staying was so that he could come with me he should have just done the right thing then and let me go and then I could have come home and been with my mom, but he didn't. And, uh, you know, there were signs all along that he was not a good person from his Hitler photo that I defended and defended and defended and defended him calling other girls cunts and making fun of people and making a complete spectacle of himself in person by mocking and making fun of people and the way he would treat Dorian, push him around, smack him. He threw a wrench at his back once, hit him in the middle of his back, which almost got him a one-way ticket right out of that house. It was just him and Dorian both said, no, no, it's okay in the end. But that was, that was not, not cool. And then, um, finally with what he did by moving back in, moving in with Dorian and stealing Dorian's wife. And when Dorian said, please don't do this, you know, can you back off? And Logan's like, no, I love her too much. Logan doesn't know what love is. He thought he loved me. That that was obviously not love. You don't treat someone you love the way he treated me. And what he feels for this little girl is not love either. Um, they both are doing the trans thing for attention. And uh, um, she's not really into that. I've, I've uh, been told about her pretending to be trans, um, but preferring female pronouns, even though she's, she is a female and, uh, he's doing whatever she wants because she wants to do all these threesomes and stuff. And if he bows down and does everything she wants, he gets like to live out all his sexual fantasies with her. And, um, that's the true story behind that, which is really messed up. But I mean, it's their life If they want to do it. They could do it, but they didn't need to involve Dorian in it. Logan's just a very, very selfish, self-centered person. And a lot of people say it's because of me, because I manipulated him, I groomed him, and I completely screwed up his head by getting with him when he was so young. I don't see how that's true, to be honest, because when I got with him, I didn't... I, I suggested he stop smoking for his health and don't do drugs. You know, um, I encouraged him to better his life, you know, do good his mom wanted him to do do shots and go get drunk with her and experiment with drugs and things like that, which doesn't make any sense to me. As a mother, you shouldn't want your kid to do those things, but she did. And she'd sit there and talk about her lesbian experiences with him, which was really improper. But then again, she supports him ruining a marriage and pretending to be trans, even though she's in a lesbian relationship and two of his grandmas are gay. He's got zero respect for the for the gay community, the trans community, or whatever. I'm very, very, very sorry. I'm not part of it. It slipped my mind exactly what it's called. Uh, I have respect for it. People try to say I'm a transphobe. I'm not. I've got some really, really close friends that are trans, and I love them, and I support them. What I don't support are people using it for attention and pretending that they are because they're making a mockery out of other people's struggles, and I just... I'm sorry, but I don't think that's right. And I've been, I've already been scolded saying that that's not right and you should support everybody. But what this person and other people who feel like that don't seem to understand is that not everybody is real. People nowadays especially do it for attention. And if you support the people that are making a mockery of it and that are doing it for attention, you're hurting the cause. You're not helping it. You help it by weeding out the people that are making fun and that are, are putting a bad name on it. You know, you, you support the ones that are genuine and that really need help, really need support. But those other people that are just doing it for the likes and the lols or whatever, they are just hurting the ones that really need your support and that really, really need to have 
a safe space to go to. And I've had friends that have gone through some really, really tough times being trans with either whether it be how do they come out to their their friends or their family. They don't feel safe in in public or if they start dating somebody new. Do you tell them at the beginning that you're trans and have them turn their back on you? Do you tell them after you've been with them for a while and risk them calling you a liar and leaving you anyway once you're already really emotionally invested? I mean, it's dangerous for them out there. They suffer a lot and people like Logan and Issa should not be taking it lightly and making a mockery of it. If, if I felt like Logan was really, really, really trans and that there had been some kind of sign there that I might have missed or whatever, or if I knew I didn't see what I saw uh, about them doing it for the likes, then I... I would grudgingly support it. I wouldn't like support it, but I wouldn't say anything about it. Um, but yeah, the, the people like that, it's just, they're just bad people all around. And I don't care what you think of me for saying that because I, I have a right to my opinion as well. And I'm going to stick with that. And, um, I've seen too many people be hurt by people acting like that or acting like it's some big old fad. It's not a fad. And it's not something that, that should be taken that lightly. It's something that real people have to have to suffer and struggle through. And that doesn't make you a transphobe to want to defend the ones that need defending. Um, and call out the ones that are, are making a mockery of somebody else's pain. But anyhow, I know I've gone off on so many tangents on this, as I always do. If you've seen this, my wedding tattoo, and wonder why I have not gotten it covered as well, I have a design in mind. It took me a while because since it's so visible, I don't want to just color all black and look completely stupid. I'm going to have a real design over it. So it took me a while to find what I wanted to put. Now that I've decided on a design, I have to find someone who I think would do it justice. And once I save up for that, then I'll be getting that covered. I haven't not covered it out of any lingering feelings for him or anything because trust me, I've got none. Uh, except for maybe hatred and scorn and disgust, but uh, I'm just waiting for the right time to cover it, the right um, person to do it. Uh, what else? So to sum everything up, once again, um, if I could take it back, I would. Being with Logan was the single one of the single biggest regrets I have ever had in my entire life. There's stuff with my son that I regret worse, but with Logan, meeting him and getting with him, I would do anything if, if it meant I, I would still be with Josh. If it meant I could still be with Josh, I would do anything to take it back and undo it. I'm not a pedophile. I don't seek out young children or young boys. I don't go out of my way to... uh groom or whatever young kids uh I was only with him because I thought that he loved me and all I wanted in like in the entire world was just to find someone who would accept me for who I am and love me and I thought that the age gap was just the thing that made the perfect story not so perfect but I was wrong and I was blinded by what I thought was love and then once I got in it and it became known, I was trapped in it because I didn't see any way to get out of it without proving everybody right and making life a lot harder for myself than it already was. Life has been hard for me ever since it happened. It's been over two years now. I'm out of the country. We have nothing to do with each other and I'm still bashed and mocked and called a pedophile and a dirty creature that should be locked up and made out to be where I prey on young boys and it's not like that it was never like that ever never I just I didn't know he was that young when I met him I knew he was younger than me but not that young and once I found out he was that young I already liked him have feelings for him and didn't intend on getting into a relationship with him and everything just kind of happened and I was already in it and I went with it and I thought that he was happy and I thought that I was happy and it turned out neither of us were happy and now we've moved on and he's just growing into a more and more horrible person and I'm getting more and more abuse for it. So I don't really know what else to say about that. I really hate the way people portray me online as if 
on like this nasty pedophile that's out there looking for really young boys so that I can enslave them with my wiles and keep them as sex slaves or something stupid like that. I, I'm so boring when it comes to sex and I definitely don't use sex for anything, uh, other than trying to give it to them if they need it or want it so that they don't go behind my back and cheat on me. But that doesn't seem to matter in the end just because I won't piss on them or gape open my cooter for them or prance around naked or have threesomes or whatever. I just, I'm just not into that. And instead of talking to me before it gets to that point, they will just go behind my back and either cheat on me or go watch porn or do other hurtful things. And I don't know. It was just a fail all around. And I, yeah, there's, if I had one wish if, right now, it would just be that I'd never met him, never gotten with him. And um, I know there's going to be a lot of people who will listen to this and still not care. They'll choose not to see my reasons and pretend that they don't understand what it's like to be alone and to just want anybody, just want somebody who wants you. And the first person that comes along in a while that makes you feel special or loved, you jump on it because you think that it's real, you know. Um, I mean, remember husband number three before that? That wasn't good for the whole time I was in New Zealand. So that's from like 2006 on. I hadn't had any physical affection or anything. I mean, he was just jealous, 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 watching everything. We didn't sleep in the same room or anything either because of, he snored as well. But I wasn't physically attracted to him. Um, I was at first, and then his attitude just pushed me away, and it just got worse and worse. And he was into the porn stuff as well and really dirty things and... Um, and then the one that I was with long distance, of course, there's nothing physical there. So Logan was the first physical person I had in front of me that I was attracted to and that wanted to be around me, it seemed, um, since 2006, pretty much. And I wasn't, I wasn't thinking straight a hundred percent. I... I, um, what was that word? I brainwashed myself and I over romanticized everything, trying to excuse what I was feeling. And even though I knew I wasn't breaking any laws, uh, I wasn't happy that he was that much younger, but what could I do? As long as I wasn't breaking laws, I didn't see who it was hurting. I never forced him to be with me. I tried to dump him and I offered for him to leave many times and he didn't want to. And um, I'm not going to just force someone to leave me who acts like they want to stay with me. Why would I do that? I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me why, why I would do that. And I kept making excuses for his behavior and uh, in the end, it really just turns out he was just a shitty person. I mean. He was kind of sad when I lost the first, uh, like our first babies, but then when I had the ectopic, he really didn't show any emotion at all. And that threw me, but he tried to tell me that it was because he burnt himself out from the first one and he didn't really have anything left for the second one. But I think by then he probably didn't really care about me anymore. And it just didn't phase him that we had just lost another baby. He didn't really... He didn't really seem to care. I mean, he was really sad with the first ones. He was, he was torn up. He was crying. But by the time the ectopic came around, he was just kind of like, meh. And that, that really crushed me. It hurt me so much. But he didn't, yeah, he didn't really care. And all these little things I didn't see at the time. I was so used to excusing his behavior for everything that I looked right past it. And online, I had to write so many fibs that in real life it kind of spilled over and when he would act a certain way I would fib to myself about why he was acting that way just to make pretend that we really were as happy as we should have been and we weren't and that's what I get for just wanting to matter to somebody but in the end it worked out perfect because we're not together anymore and I found Josh I don't know 
what changes in my life would have led me down a different path and I wouldn't have found Josh. That's the only thing that sucks. Um, but I wish that the path had not led me to Logan. And on the last note, I'd like to say that I, I've said this before, but again, people, people always, they hear or they read word for word what I say and they twist it around so that I don't say that like, like with my babies, you know, um, we had, I had, um, my topic and I had DNC for the twins to scrape everything out. In New Zealand, they say they will give you your remains and you can take them. They encase it in wax and it's sterilized and everything. And you can take it home and you can bury it. That way they don't dispose of it like trash because this is still your tissue. These are still your babies. So I did that. I said that I'd even shown a video of, of the remains. It's, it's like just pale white tissue. It doesn't really look like anything, actually. Um, it kind of looks like tripe. If you know what tripe looks like in the supermarket, it looks almost exactly like tripe, just cut up or encased in wax. And I put them in the freezer in a, in the bag that the hospital gave me way in the back because we didn't own our own home and we had nowhere to baby, bury the babies. I didn't want to bury them and then move and leave a part of me behind like that, which is completely understandable. And even though I shared it and I spoke of it, people still accuse me of keeping my dead babies in jars like I squat over a jar and bleed into it and just keep it keep it in the fridge or whatever they've twisted my words around into something really gross like that and that's just not the way it is and I don't understand how people can see the truth and hear the truth and go on a completely different tangent even though I know I explain everything very 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 clearly that just irritates me so much and it just shows that all they want to do is cause trouble and drama because they're ignoring the truth in favor of a lie and there are too many people out there that feed off of drama that they'll just go with it like, oh my God, she really does that without bothering to look into it or even caring once they do find out that's not true. So the last thing is, again, is something that I've already said, and that is I've been caught saying, you are the love of my life. You are the one that's the most special to me. You are everything to me. And I have said that to quite a few people in the past, but that doesn't mean it wasn't true when I said it. When you're with someone, when anybody is with someone, you should be with them and feel strongly for them. You should either, and you might end up in marriage or you might just be very serious about them or whatever. At the time you're with them, obviously you care about them greatly or you, you love them. And if you love them, you're going to tell them that. You don't get with someone thinking in your head, yeah, I'm going to dump this person soon. I mean, I'm sure some people out there do, but that's wrong. You should never get with someone with, with the intent of leaving them. And so in your head, of course, you would hope that this person is the one, is the one that you love or the one that you're the closest to. And you think that you're going to correct all the mistakes of your past. And this one will definitely work out. And this is the person you're meant to be with. At least that's how I think. And so with every new person I get with, sure, I might say I love you more than the last person because in that moment, it's true. And that's how I feel. I feel like that person is everything to me because I'm with them. And when I'm with somebody, they are everything to me. And then later on, it turns out we split up or they hurt me and that's no longer true. But in the moment when it's said, it is true. And I've said to Josh, he is the most important one. I love him the most. And that is true because I'm with him. If I wasn't with him anymore, obviously something would have happened. He would have done something and we would have split up, but that's not going to happen. I'm not, I'm, I, I, I just would not, I don't have anything left in me to be in another relationship if this doesn't work out. I'm just not even, I don't even want to try if it doesn't work. But um, with Logan, you know, at the very beginning, I did think he was everything. Before that, the husband before that, um, before I actually moved to New Zealand, I thought he was everything. I mean, he was the only one that was there for me when I was in America. He was overseas. He sent me the ticket to New Zealand. He was my only friend and the only one who cared if I lived or died when I was going through really hard times before I moved. So what I said to him was true at the time. Um, my second husband, I thought he was like the love of my life, like my soulmate when we were together. That was true at the time. And then he showed his colors. I mean, that's just the way it is. It doesn't mean I'm lying or I, I feed the same lines to everybody I end up with. That's not how that is. It's just... I feel deeply 
about everything you know whether it's love or hate or anger or pain I get hurt really easily I'm just there's there's nothing between my emotions I wear my heart on my sleeve I wear everything just everything's just out in the forefront and so when I meet someone and they sweep me off my feet I give everything I have to them and they are everything to me while I'm with them and I try and I try and I try I try to be the best person I could be for them and um I don't know why it doesn't work out a lot of the time I don't know if I give them too much and they learn to take advantage of me because I've become like a doormat for them or or what I don't know I don't know that's the only thing I can really think of but like for instance for Josh um if he's cold and he's huddled up I go over and I cover him up I tuck him in every night I cover him up if his soap is out in the shower I put a new soap for him I make him lunch I cook him dinner you know I sew up his clothes I whatever money I get I buy him gifts and stuff and I, I do everything I can for him everything I can I always put him first if he's hungry um, and I'm eating something and he likes it. I give him like, I'll, I'll literally give him the food out of my mouth, you know, off of my plate if he wants it. She, he, he usually doesn't want to take it from me, but since I can't eat much anyway, I, I see no problem with giving it to him cause I know he'll enjoy it, you know? And I just, I always put him ahead of myself. I always put everybody ahead of me in every relationship that I'm in. And my main concern is always just making sure that they're happy and they love me, they want to stay with me. And if I'm doing something wrong, I try to undo it or fix it so that they don't want to leave and they won't hurt me. But um, a lot of people don't think that way and they think nothing of hurting the other person that they're with or they just don't care. And um, I don't know, I know I must have some huge flaw in my being that I, I am not aware of as hard as I try to see what's wrong with me that other people see I can't. I can't at all and I don't know how hard I should try to keep looking because I know that nobody's perfect and there's a lot of people out there that are worse than me I saw um, a status yesterday actually of some girl saying that someone she knew and hated their baby died and she was happy she doesn't care about this girl's little bitch baby dying and she wishes more bad stuff would happen and I was like whoa I've never even said anything that bad, like as the way that she worded it and how she was gloating and laughing over it. But people like her are never featured on the hate sites, but people like me and me in particular are. And if you look on any of the sites, you will see that the single most hated person usually is me. The worst person of everything, of everybody out there usually is me. And I just don't understand it. I really don't. I mean, not one person on the face of this planet is perfect. And um, yeah, I'm not gonna make excuses for my past because I never tried to hurt anybody. I say things, I express myself and I loved, <laughs> I tried to love and yeah, I, I've been blabbing way too much about this. I can easily go on this and go in a big circle for like another hour or two, but I won't. So I'm going to stop myself right here. I'm very sorry. The point is, I hate Logan. Like, I literally hate him. I hate him for what he's done to Dorian. He's a jerk. He's an ass. He's selfish, self-centered. He's with the perfect person for him. I wish I'd never met him. Wish I'd never gotten with him. That was a one-off thing. I'm not a pedophile. I'm not a kitty fucker. And I'm not a manipulator or a kitty groomer. And uh, I didn't get with him for sexual reasons. I got with him for love reasons. And it didn't work out. And people need to get the story straight before they market me as like the worst disgusting predator out there. World's worst disgusting predator out there. Because that's not the way it is at all. And uh, that's all I have to say about it. I'm sorry, this was way longer than I thought it was going to be. I'm going to try to edit it and make it a little bit easier so there's a lot of snips and cuts. That'll be why. I will see you guys when I see you, and um, take care. Just try not to believe everything you read. People, people out there are lying on purpose to get their kicks, and it's just not fair to those of us who are just trying to live our lives. I just want to move on from this. 
he and I are over. Stop making me pay for it forever. How long is this going to go on? I mean, you know, I've paid for my mistakes. I've long, long paid for my mistakes. And I don't deserve to have to keep going through this. That's all I have to say.